When we first started looking at circuit analysis and started uh, studying the topic, I mentioned how there are really only five fundamental types of elements that we need to study in order to understand all circuits. Voltage sources, current sources, resistors, capacitors, and inductors. And up to this point, everything we've done in terms of circuit analysis, we've done studying just with sources and resistors. Now it's time for us to move into the next phase of the material, and that is to now look at these last two elements, capacitors and inductors. Capacitors and inductors operate in a fundamentally very different manner from resistors. Resistors, of course, dissipate power. Capacitors and inductors do not. They store power. So what we'll find is a capacitor stores energy in an electric field. Inductors store energy in a magnetic field. Furthermore, capacitors and inductors don't just store energy in, in electric and magnetic fields. They also can release that energy later on back into the circuit, but they do not dissipate power. Or I should say they don't dissipate energy. So they'll absorb power. They can have positive power, but that power is not being turned into heat or light. Instead, it's being stored, and then later on, they can release that energy back into the circuit again. So what we'll find is, when we look at the behavior of capacitors and inductors, what we're going to see is, first of all, we're going to need some calculus to understand how they work in terms of the voltage-current relationship. The other thing we're going to see is that the equations that describe capacitors versus the equations that describe inductors are mathematical duels of each other. In other words, once you look at the equations for one, you'll see it has the same form as the equation for the other. We're just flipping the voltage and current variables around. What that means is once you understand the math for one, it's easy to understand the math for the other. One last thing I want to mention is that Sources, as we've said before, voltage and current sources, we consider these to be active elements. In other words, as active elements, a source can continuously have negative power. It can continuously generate energy and then put and feed that to the rest of the circuit. On the other hand, capacitors, resistors, and inductors are all passive elements. In other words, as passive elements, they cannot continuously generate energy. They cannot continuously have negative power. We're going to see that capacitors and inductors can have negative power for a brief amount of time as they release stored energy back into the circuit, but they can't keep it up forever. So I just want to make this distinction. I before had said that resistors are passive elements, but capacitors and inductors fall into the exact same classification. All right, so let's begin next and let's look at the capacitor, pardon me, the equations that, that, that uh, describe how a capacitor works and also look at the schematic symbol and other equations relating to power and energy for a capacitor.